may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video. Make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. I want to thank everybody for the stuff that came in today. This came in from... I better put my glasses on because I can't see. One thing about me, if I don't have my glasses, I can't see anymore. Okay, this came in... Let's see. Let's see if I've got a name on it. Sometimes they don't come with names. <clears throat> it don't look like there was a name on this, but uh, people love to send Gabe his food, so whoever sent this, God bless you. So I didn't get a name on that one. Let's see. No name. But thank you for whoever sent that. And this came in for Gabe also. Let's see. Don't look like we got a name on it either. But he got more kitty food. Whoever sent this, I appreciate it. Didn't get a name on it. But Gabe definitely appreciates it. He loves this food that you all send him all the time. So whoever sent this, God bless you. See, what else do we have here? Just bear with me, people. Bear with me. Also, we had Robert McArdle. I appreciate you sending in a donation. God bless you. Let's see. Let's see, who else? Okay. And Miss Karen sent in stuff also. God bless Miss Karen. So that's what we had come in today and uh, there was some uh, money cards you know who sent them in some people didn't want it, their names mentioned so we don't want to do that because we don't want to they're just doing it for to help me and I appreciate all the ones who support the channel like this God bless each and every one of you because without you the channel does not go now we talked about earlier about all the stuff we're looking for in the news where Satan is and where he's trying to move. Now, this is as after Biden indi in indicates that the invasion of Rafa could be a red line, Netanyahu says, we'll go there. According to the recent CNN report, the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden does not expect an imminent grand invasion of Rafa. However, in a new interview on Sunday, Politico, Paul Netanyahu appeared to uh, counter this expectation, saying Israel intends to enter Rafa. When asked if IDF troops would enter Rafa, Netanyahu replied, we'll go there. We're not going to leave. In this interview with MSNBC on Saturday, Biden appeared to initially identify an invasion of Rafa as a red line before backtracking. When asked whether Israel's ground operation in Rafa could be considered a red line, he responded, it is a red line, but I'll never going to leave Israel. The defense, Israel, uh, the defense of Israel is still critical, so there's no 
no red line where I'm going to cut off all weapons and do not have the Iron Dome to protect them, Biden said. Netanyahu referred to his own red line during the interview of Politico. You know I have a red line. You know, know what the red line is? That October 7th does not happen again. Israel has faced increasingly international pressure to agree to a ceasefire, especially during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Netanyahu dismissed calls for a ceasefire with a significant hostage release deal. Without a release, there is not going to be a pause in the fighting, he stated. While Biden has been pushing for a six-week ceasefire as part of the hostage release so Hamas can go back and uh, basically get themselves more into that place to where Israel can't get to them. So it's like, you know, they're, they're trying to help Hamas as much as they can without saying it. While Biden has been pushing for the six-way ceasefire, part of the hostage release deal, Netanyahu indicated that as soon as Israel begins the Rafa operation, its military objectives would be met sooner. We've destroyed three-quarters of Hamas fighting terrorism battalions, and we're close to finishing the last part in, 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 in war, warfare, Netanyahu said. He said fighting would take weeks, not months, maybe six weeks, maybe four, he added. During the interview, the Prime Minister also gave the update on Israel's assignments of combat. Combatant casualties, according to Netanyahu, the IDF has eliminated at least 13,000 Hamas and Palestinian Islamic jihads. Netanyahu also said that according to Israel's calculation, the civilian to combat ratio is between 1 and 1 to 5, meaning the total casualty figures are likely somewhere between 26,000 and 32,000. If true, this would represent one of the lowest civilian to, uh, to combat and death toll ratios in modern combat, especially in urban warfare. Much of the discussion regarding civilian casualties numbers in the, made, in the media and by international politicians have not taken into account the number of terrorists, uh, citing merely the total casualty figures as the, they represent only civilian casualties. Netanyahu also, Netanyahu also said Politico he, that the uh, tacit support of several Arab leaders to finish the war with Hamas. They understand that even agreed with it uh, quickly, he told Rashaver, they understand Hamas is part of the Iranian terrorist access. Israel has stated it would not enter Rafa until it's ready to transfer the more than one million displaced persons from their safe zone. Israel is allegedly in the process of preparing such a safe zone for the northern Gaza Strip. Now, this is another one. Netanyahu also hints Israel killed Hamas number three guy, Marwan Liza, confirmed Arari killed by Israeli airstrikes. Now, amid intense media speculation that Israel managed to kill Hamas number three leader, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Monday hinted that the reports may be true, while seemingly also confirming Israel killed Salaf, the terror group's number four guy, in January. Since Monday morning, the Israeli media landscape has been abuzz with rumors that Hamas number three guy, the arch terrorist and member of the terrorist group leading trio, uh, was killed in an airstrike in the Gaza Strip. Later in the day, the IDF censors allowed the, to publish the, that last Saturday a joint operation with the Shin Bet Triad to eliminate Isa with several airstrikes in that camp in central Gaza Strip. The IDF did not confirm if the operation was successful. Palestinian sources reported that several people were killed in the in a unusually intense airstrikes in the area on Saturday, adding that Isa hasn't been heard from since. Several hours later, Netanyahu appeared to hint that Isa has indeed died in the video statement. We are on our way to a total victory. One way to the victory is already eliminated. Number four of Hamas, number three, number two, and number one is on the way, the Prime Minister said, adding that they're all dead men, and we will reach them all. Hamas, number four, was widely considered to be uh, Salef al-Rori, the deputy chief of Hamas politi political bureau and one of the founders of the group's armed wing. He, uh, he was killed in an airstrike in Beirut last January, and Hamas and Hezbollah blaming Israel for the strike. And, you know, comments is, are seen at the first official confirmation of Israel's role of Arari's death. Uh, Marwan Issa, 59 year old, is considered to be Hamas's number three, and the deputy of the leader of the brigades, Mohammed Deaf, both answer to Sinwar, the overall leader of Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Isa has been the terrorist for decades and was among Hamas's founding members. 
After a stint in Israel prison, he was released just before the second Antifa began in 2000 and immediately returned to terror activity. The sense of Issa was, uh, has rarely appeared in public, but has been seen as responsible for the directly planning numerous terror attacks in Israel over the recent decades. If Marwan Issa is indeed eliminated, this is significant achievement. This is a multitasking man who held three positions at the same time. He was a defense minister of Hamas, a member of Hamas government. In addition, he was also the deputy chief of staff, the deputy head of the military arms, and perhaps most importantly, he was a strategic brain of Hamas. Beyond that, he was a close inter something of Sinwar. He was his um, he was his balance and was largely able to control Sinwar's mental freezes. As a very good friend of Deaf, he was the link between Sinwar and Deaf. So it's true the public doesn't know him, but sometimes the glue of the trio is almost as important as the leader. So they take out now number three and number four. So Hamas is on its way out, okay? The world is not happy with that because they want to make a two-state solution and have the Palestinians have a state. So they're trying to force Netanyahu into this, and Netanyahu's already said no. This is what's going to have the Psalms 83 war, and you're going to have all these Confederate countries. You're already seeing that take place right now as we speak. You're seeing what's happening with Yemen, Lebanon, Syria, and even Saudi Arabia and all of them will get on board when all this stuff finally goes to pass because Lucifer is going to get all these guys to come into Israel. It's already it's prophecy. It will happen. When all this stuff goes down, Israel's army will manage, I do believe, to take out Damascus, and I think that's where a nuke will be used, and they will take out the Arab nations by themselves, I do believe, from what I'm understanding now that I'm reading back through there, and then that's when the hook will be put into the jaw of Russia, Turkey, and all them, and they will come down because what Israel did. But first of all, Israel will think that they have a peace. They have took out all these bad nations, so their walls will come down. They feel like, hey, we've got this blipped. But then these other guys, these big guys, will come down, and God will have to defeat them, and he will. Meanwhile, World War III is also taking place between Europe and there, between NATO and Russia. So you've got all this stuff happening at one time. Looks like that's the way it's going to fall. U.S. is trying to disrupt Russian elections. Here's more stuff. See, it just keeps progressing and progressing. The administrator of the U.S. President Joe Biden has allegedly tasked the NGO in reducing the turnout of the upcoming Russian election. According to a statement by Russian Foreign Intelligence Service, the agency's press bureau said on Monday that it has obtained information that suggests Washington is seeking to disrupt the vote, said to take place on March 15th and 17th. See, that's right around the corner. Said to take place. The, in order to do, uh, stop the, you know, basically... Uh, hurt the election results as the instigate of uh, instigation of Washington calls on being spread through opposition internet resources for Russian citizens. It's funny they say they all that Russia always interferes with theirs, and they admit that they're interfering with Russia's election. You can't make this stuff up. To ignore elections, they claimed it added that the U.S. is planning to carry out cyber attacks on remote electronic voting systems. That they just claimed that Russia did that to us, by the way to make it impossible to court the ballots to significant portion of the voters. I mean, so I wonder if America hacked their own election and blamed it on Russia, because that's exactly what happened to us, and they're doing it to Russia. Makes you think. The plan is simple in American way. According to Washington's calculators, the resulting reduction in turnout will give the West a reason to question the, result, the election results. However, they suggest that the West's attempt to undermine the Western election would potentially backfire, and it will. Big time. But right there shows you they're not going to stop with what they're doing. They they want a war, and they're going to push it to there is no limit. We already know the outcome. That's why I tell you, get excited. The rapture of the church is coming. Now, it says here, Ukraine threatens serious operations against Crimea. That's another red line of Russia. So, once again, let's just keep pushing them. Actions in Kiev, special forces in Black Sea region, have already took down uh, four of their boats. Attack on Crimea, the head of Ukraine military intelligence, 
uh, announced on Monday as part of promotion for a TV documentary called War at Sea, which aired on the unified Ukrainian TV network on Sunday. Uh, Budinov posted a statement on the uh, official Telegram channel. There are all preparatory measures for a serious operation Crimea, he said. In addition, it's a good message for a population that has been living under our occupation for 10 years. Many of them believe that they have been forgotten. That's not true. Those people in Crimea all got together and voted for Russia to get them out. They did not want to be part of Ukraine. They did not want to be part of the West. They did not like NATO. That's why they did that. Some 90% uh, of the Crimeans voted to rejoin Russia in March 2014. 97%. Shortly after the U.S.-backed coup in Ukraine, Moscow has considered the peninsula part of the Soviet territory ever since, while Kiev has continued to speak in terms to de-occupation de-occup- of that. The documentary uh, produced by the Gur offered a narrative of Ukraine military success of the Dnieper River. That's the river that I told you that goes up. And on that side of it, that's where the nuclear bombs will fall that will destroy Ukraine. So, like I said, all this is playing out. All these articles lead to what God showed us. Every bit of it. The rapture is very soon, people. We're not going to be here much longer. I know you've heard that for a long time, but I can tell you right now, the red heifers is your final sign. The X over America, though, April 8th, tells us that judgment's coming upon America for trying to separate Israel. And it will, because it's Bible. God said, you try to separate my state, I'll take care of you, personally. There's no great revival coming to America. It's judgment. And boy, he's going to hit it hard. The economy, war, it's all going to hit the United States at one time. It's going to be bad. Do not be left here. Trust in the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Past, present, future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. People, the church is leaving. And it's leaving soon. All indications. These are prophecies. And Jesus said, when you see all these things happen, the temple coming, all that stuff, look up. You believe God? Or you believe man. These churches are going to tell you you got plenty of time. Oh, we've got plenty. I hear them all the time. Got plenty of time. They're no no better than the world. Telling their people lies. We do not have a lot of time. Satan wants everybody to think there's plenty of time because he knows the rapture is coming as well as we do. And he knows it's soon. He don't know when, just like we don't. But he knows it's soon. And the more he can convince people that they got all this time, they're not going to get saved. And they're going to stay asleep. And that's what he wants. And the church just literally pushes Satan's propaganda. And that's what's happening right now. That's why the world's asleep. Satan done everything he could to eliminate the rapture. Because, see, the rapture plays a big role in his plans. When we go up, he brings down his deception. And God's going to let people believe it. Because they don't know the word of God. That's how this is going to play out, people. And it's already in progress. That means get excited. We're not going to be here much longer. God bless each and every one of you for being here at the channel. Thank you for all those who bought me coffees today and those who bought the super stickers. God bless each and every one of you for supporting the channel, always for bringing me into your household each and every day. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Care everything. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.